how to set up this camper here today. This is a Flagstaff pop-up. It's got a queen, twin, can, see, can, can sleep two others additional down low, or you can use the lower areas for seating or dining. So this is what it looks like all set up. We're going to show you how to do it. So the first thing you're going to have to do is get it unhitched from your vehicle, whatever you're towing it with. Um, so there's a couple steps here. The first thing you're going to want to do is uh, bring down your um, support uh, rod that holds your um, your wheel. There's a uh, there's a pin in there or a, a bump up that's going to slide onto a groove on this slot. So you're going to have to kind of find the groove on the slot of this shaft and get this little bump up thread onto that. Once, once you get it all the way up, you're going to rotate it and lock it into place and then it'll drop down and lock into place. Uh, if you don't rotate it, it's just going to fall back off. All right. So I'm going to find the, uh, the groove. I'm going to line that up with the, nut, with the bump out. So there, I've got it in the groove, i got it up, then I just got to rotate it, and there, now it's on. So after I rotate it, it drops down in, now it's going to stay on there nice and solid. So now all I really have to do is uh, just crank this down. That's just going to push the wheel down and uh, raise, raise this up. Now before I get it up, I want to uh, pop off my pin, my restraint, restraining pin here. And I just I just clip that you know I just clip that off to the side. You want to raise up your uh, your ball your ball catch out of the way, and uh, you're going to take off your two safety chains. I just kind of set, this hook goes off to the side. Set off your two safety chains off to the side. And then you got to un unhook your uh, your wiring harness uh, that hooks into your from your trailer harness into your car harness. Um, one thing I've noticed is that these uh you know once you've let your trailer sit all winter and you're about ready to get it back out for the season, uh, these tend to have a lot of corrosion on them. Uh, a lot. Anyways, there's some corrosion that as well as the corrosion on the uh, the the jack on the, the car because the car mine just is expose the elements all winter long so there's a little corrosion here so just be careful when you hook hook it back up when you reverse all these steps when you're about ready to drive definitely test your lights you know you might have to jiggle it around might have to use a little uh, sandpaper to kind of clean off these electrodes to get that connection sound so um, just make sure you test your lights before you start driving all right so you just set that aside as well And now you're, you're pretty much free and clear just to bring it right off the hitch. And there you go. First thing to be done before you get the whole camper all put unfolded and unpopped up. Well, the first thing you want to do is get the camper level. So you don't roll out of your bed all night long, all right? So that's uh, something you might not think of, but what I've done is I've uh, bought a actual bubble balance level, put it right in the trailer. I put it on top so I can actually see if I've got the whole thing level. And uh, that way, you know, it's real comfortable. You're not feeling like you're off balance all, all the time when you're inside your camper. So um, since uh, all the equipment's inside the camper, I'm going to start by first just loosening the top of the camper to get it just so I can open the door because I don't have any external storage space. So I'm going to just pop it up. I'll show you how to undo that. That's kind of the first step of getting the whole thing up, but I'm not going to go too far with that. First thing I'm going to do is get it level. I do before 
before I start cranking it up, in order to get the door open, which I'll show you on the other side here in just a second, is all I do is I just kind of lift it up just a little bit, just to get it up just a bit. I'm going to crank it up here in a minute, but that just gets it uh, so I can open up the door. I'll show you that on the other side. Since I don't have any external storage where I can just put tools in and out easily without getting the, the top up, I have to get the door open. Now, there's a seal here that seals down really nice, so everything's tight and waterproof when you're driving down the road, even if it's raining. It's, it's great, great design. However, it's hard to open up the door if the top's all the way down. So you got to kind of lift it up. I already took off the latches. You saw me kind of just give it a little bit of a, a lift on the other side. I'm going to do the same thing over here. All that does is just kind of gets it up just a little bit. And you actually do have to hold it up just a little bit while you swing the door open. So I'm just going to hold it up just a little bit. Just swing that door open. That saves the seal, which you'll see that a little bit later on in the process. Uh, you know, it's a good idea not to rip that off, but you wish you probably will be if you keep the top down while you open that up. All right, so just be careful. Uh, to not open up that door without just lifting up this uh, this canopy just a little bit. A couple of things that don't really come with your camper that I recommend you uh, put in it as kind of small little helpful things. Um, one is like I mentioned is the level. What I'm going to be doing is using this to level the actual camper before I get it all set up. I'm just going to set that there. That's one of the places I'm going to use to measure the, the level of the camper. Uh, other things I recommend is having some blocks of wood. Um, you know, some nice flat ones like some 2x6s that are kind of cut maybe a foot in length like this. Having um, maybe about 8 of them or maybe 10 of them uh, is a good idea because you might need a couple uh, at the different corners which I'm going to show you how to level it. Depending on how uneven your campsite is, you know, you might need a, a bit of a wedge uh, on one corner or another if there's a little grade on your campsite. Uh, there's some flex, there's some adjustability on your um, um, stabilizing legs, but uh, there's a limit to that. So, plus you always want these to uh, kind of distribute the weight. Uh, those legs will dig right into a soft ground and not really do a good job of stabilizing. So you want a nice little piece of wood underneath those uh, uh, stabilizing legs. Um, one thing I found very helpful is just using a card uh, jack. Uh, on the different corners to actually try to uh, help uh, raise or lower the different corners of the uh, trailer. So uh, these are things that don't come with your camper that I just recommend you do add. Uh, just store them in one of your internal storage devices. Uh, and I'll show you what I'm going to do now uh, to use these to actually level the camper. At each corner of the camper, underneath, is a stabilizing leg that is held up there with spring pressure. To bring it down, you need to grasp it and push it towards the center of the camper. That's gonna allow it to get off of whatever kind of detent that holds it in place and allow you to pivot it down, okay? So I'll show you how that works here. Then I'll show you an undershot so you can see how it works. So you just gotta grab it, you push it towards the front of the, you know, towards the center of the camper, and then that's going to allow it just to pivot down, and there it is. So here's a, one of those pieces of what I talked about. I'm just going to kind of put it in the proximity of where this is. These little uh, levers are what lower, lower this bar. by pushing down on this, and I'll show you how to forcefully do that with one of these, with this, um, this is actually the bar that comes with the camper that you insert in this hole that will actually forcefully um, allow you to jack up the, uh, the camper. Like I said, I do find sometimes it's quite a bit easier just to uh, use a car jack, grab the frame, raise up to just get to the right level, and uh, and that's sometimes a little bit easier than trying to muscle this with this uh, manual uh, bar to, uh, to change the height. So I'll show you how that works here in just a minute. So for now, I'm just going to set, set all the uh, leveling feet down first without getting them perfect. And I'm going to start to get them fine-tuned by measuring the level uh, on the trailer and the camper. All right, I'll show you how to do that here right now. Uh, I like to 
first get it close with the, the leveling uh, front uh, support rod, and then I'll uh, I'll use my car jack on each corner to then kind of really get it all fine tuned. All right, so we'll, we'll do that right next. Once we have the trailer level, we're ready to bring up the top. <clears throat> the top crank mechanism is uh, behind this uh, cover here. You're going to have a crank mechanism. This is not the uh, OEM version. This is kind of a home-baked version that was uh, made by the previous owner. Uh, it, it basically works. You're basically going to have a uh, rectangle that's going to engage a um, screw that's in here that uh, basically just uh, fit it onto the, uh, the screw that's going to crank up the top and uh, you're going to have some kind of a ratchet so this is just you know something straight out of Craftsman or whatnot and uh, it gives you a little diagram here down and up but uh, you're going to get the feel of the pressure of the um, of the resistance whether you're going up or down so you'll, you'll be able to figure it out so, uh, now you just crank it up. Now, how far do you go? There's actually going to be a red cable that's going to be on this corner that you want to crank it up until that red cable is taut. And it's also going to kind of act like a kind of a maximum height uh, tensioning rod, more uh, tensioning cable, more or less. So you want to bring it up high enough so that red cable is just tight, but not you know super tight. Just you know, just nicely tight. This is the red tension cable I'm talking about. We're only going to bring it up until this just becomes nice and tight. Just right. Our next step is to bring out the sliding portions that you're actually going to use as beds. Uh, there are metal rods that support that, that tie into these pole, that ties into these spots right here and here. And they hook into the bottom part, that part that you're going to pull out. All right. I uh, happen just to store those rods underneath the main mattress that you're going to sleep on. So once I pull this out, all I do is I just reach under the mattress, I pull out my support rods, I come underneath, I hook them in these uh, kind of, uh, sockets here, and then I hook them into the actual bottom part of the uh, material that supports the bed. 
So uh, it's a very good idea to do that soon after you pull out the, um, the bed because uh, it's kind of heavy and there's not much holding it up. So until you get those supports under it, it's a little bit, uh, I'd say, weak and vulnerable. And you definitely don't want to forget those supports uh, uh, before you lay on that bed because you, uh, you will damage your trailer for sure. So, um, so I'm going to pull this out, put the supports under it, and then um, we'll do the other side next. Myself. I, I feel I'm strong enough to do it by myself, but you might want to have a helper hold hold this end and lift it up for you. Uh, it might be a two-person um, job uh, a little bit easier, but I'm going to show you how I do it by myself. Just trying to figure out which. They're, they're different lengths, so... Uh, one goes in one end and one goes in the other. I'm just figuring out which is which. There we go. So I, I hooked it in. I'll show that to you. And I just, uh, I just push it up myself. And then just lower it in the socket. And you have to do that for both supports.
kind of make the, make sure the corners are kind of folded under. And, yeah, that'll keep the bugs out. You're now gonna elevate the roof of the sleeping areas by inserting a rod in a U-shaped bar that's at the end, pushing it outwards and then hooking it into the roof. I'll show you how that does that, but you'll see what it looks like from the outside, and then you'll see what it looks like from the inside for you to actually be able to hook that bar in. All right, here's what it looked like on the outside. Here's what it looks like on the inside. So you got this uh, this bar. You're gonna put one end in the center of a U-shaped channel, a U-shaped bar that basically supports the very end of the uh, bedding canopy. So I'll show you. And then you hook this bad boy. This end you're gonna hook it into the very top of the. Uh, you're gonna hook it into a hook on the roof here. And that's going to hold it out and hold it in place. All right, so I'll show you how to do that. So here's, so here's the U bar, and you just want to put it. There's a little, uh, there's a little peg right in the middle. You're just going to put it, just you know, the hollow part of the bar is going to go right on it, and then you just force it straight out. And you do have to apply a bit of pressure to get it uh, t tight enough so you can actually hook it on one of these hooks here. There you go. Four step just kind of comes up and out and down. Give you a nice little step um, before you drive away. Um, doing all these steps in reverse, you definitely want to make sure you have that step put, put back in. All right. Go. Nice little step. So to be efficient, we kind of store stuff in every nook and cranny. Some of your um, campsite cleaning uh, materials, we we kind of store in the in the inside of this uh, space here, which all uh, it's kind of just a nice storage space. So uh, you're gonna want to take out whatever you know you've got uh, hiding hiding in this area. We're gonna we're gonna set that aside, and eventually, basically, we'll use that uh, at our campsite while we're camping. Nice American flags, USA baby. Fly swatter, extremely important. Hot dog grillers, oh yeah. All right, so to actually get this out of the way, you've got two legs that are uh, on either end here that have little detents that have to be pressed to flip up so you can flip this baby out of the way. The legs just come down to kind of support it while it's in this position, but they need to be kind of folded back out of the way when you pivot it up, and you'll kind of see that you kind of have to do it kind of incrementally uh, to get it past all the good stuff in here anyways. So you got two... So here, here's the one. Now there's a little clip here that you have to push to pivot this leg up. There's another one over there, which I'll show you, and that is a little bit more tricky because you have to pivot up to get past this here uh, desk, all right? So uh, they both pivot up, and then this whole thing pivots over. I'll show you how to do that, hopefully. install the door. Door, very careful. The door is pivoted up and suspended and held in place on the ceiling when the whole camper is collapsed and put together for transport. So to actually get the door out you have to unclasp it, let it come down. You're going to actually feed it into slots in the door 
and then you're going to latch. You're going to latch it shut. And there's also some other latches here, which I'll show you, which also hold it in place. So the door itself is um, fairly fragile and fairly susceptible to be broken easily if handled uh, poorly or not done in the right order. You always want to do the door last. And you always want it to be the first thing you fold up as you pack up. Because if you lower this baby down, it actually can't lower with the door in place. It'll actually prevent you from going down. And you'll also just be all out of um, sync if you try to do anything before you actually get the door out of place. So I would just recommend, because sometimes this um, this will be in your way, all kinds of things will be wrong if uh, you try to do the door um, down the road or try to do it before at this point when you're setting up. When you're tearing down, definitely get the door out of place. So I'll show you how to actually do the door. First you've got uh, two clips here and here, which just need to be twisted to allow the door down. Uh, it's a very good idea to stand up over here to let it swing down towards where ultimately the door is going to be. So you're just going to hold it, flip those two uh, switches. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of a pivot here. You can see that, how that pivoted it down. That's going to be important to remember when you put it back up because when you pivot it up, you're going to have to kind of bend it and then push it up to put those clips back into place, okay? So you're going to undo the clip. It's going to kind of pivot down. And then the whole thing just kind of swings down. And then I'll uh, show you a better view of how you actually hook it into the door so the whole thing swings So up. to actually get the door in place, the first thing you want to do is have the lower, the lower door. Uh, you definitely want to have that closed. There's a latch down here which you're going to use here in just a minute. So when I bring that uh, door down off the roof, it's going to thread into uh, two channels on either end of this door. All right, so you kind of have to thread it into those channels. Uh, and you know, you have to kind of, you know, it takes a little monkeying around, but you get it in there, kind of get it centered, and then you're going to latch, latch it with this latch, okay? Now there's one more latch you have to undo to uh, allow the door to pivot out of its frame that you just uh, installed. So uh, that's a latch right up here. Before your door is ready to open, you've got two clips at the very top up here that need to be um, horizontal as you push the door down, uh, and then they'll be rotated vertical to hold the door in that um, vertical upright position. And basically this takes out that bend, remember that bend that uh, was required to get it up flat against here, this door. This, uh, door kind of bent and then came up against the roof. Well, we're going to take out that bend with these uh, clips. They're going to hold the door vertical. And you'll see them, there's two of them here. And um, they need to be rotated horizontal to actually get the door down. And then once you push the door past these clips, the clips will rotate vertical and hold the door in place, okay? So you need to have those clips horizontal. You're basically going to um, push the door past the clips and then rotate the clips so they're vertical and that's going to hold the door vertical. Now we can uh, apply the Velcro and the Velcro is on either side and what that's going to do is that's just going to uh, seal the door frame uh, with the rest of the uh, material that uh, encloses the camper and that's going to definitely keep the bugs out so you want to do a good job with this because you don't want any mosquitoes coming in and uh, bugging you during the night. And 
this Velcro is on both sides, both the inside of the uh, door and on the outside, so you'll want to do it on both sides. So at this point, you can open up your door. The door opens with this latch down here. So you operate, you operate the door with this latch down here, which is uh, extremely low for anybody other than a, a gnome. So uh, anyways, that's how you open the door. weatherproofing step is to cover up the uh, support rods with these uh, flaps and they just fold over them and are secured in with Velcro. on the other side as well. So the camper at this point is good to go, ready to camp in. Uh, one nice little feature is it does have an awning which uh, can give you some shade and some uh, reprieve from rain if it does occur unfortunately if it does happen so uh, I'll show you how to set up the, the, uh, the awning next I recommend always doing that last because the awning can be damaged by the door if you are uh, if you are trying to do the awning and, and try to do the door you might actually damage the awning so I recommend just doing, doing the awning last Sometimes it's a little bit high, so uh, I'm kind of a tall person, so I don't mind, but um, you might need a little bit of a step stool uh, to help uh, you know, get it unzipped and un unfurled. But uh, I'll show you how to do the awning next. Basically, first, it just unzips, and the whole thing will kind of unroll down. I kind of roll it up, and it'll just roll itself up and uh, stay in this nice little compartment, which you zip up. So as I unzip it, it'll just all unroll. And then there'll be poles on either end, which I'll explain here in a minute. On either end, there's a pole that will hold it out away from the camper and also support it vertically. And they both pivot at the end, so they'll both uh, unfold, and one will go down and one will go out. They both have um, kind of those ball detents, which you'll, un, uh, you'll keep uh, extending until you get to the right length. I've uh, tried to create some marks on the bars themselves to show you... Uh, when the ball's lined up with the holes, because sometimes it's hard to tell. Um, but essentially, you're just going to set it to the right level so that you know, maybe there's a little bit of slope so rain can go away from it. And uh, you know that it'll match up with the terrain that you're, you're camping in. Uh, this, this is a very good idea to have as a two-person job, uh, because all these poles uh, tend to want to kind of run all over the place. Um, when we hook the pole into the camper, there's a uh, there's actually a uh, a U-shaped peg on each corner that this pole will go into. But you'll need to insert a peg to hold the pole bar in place. I'm going to start by extending and installing the bar that actually holds the canopy
away from the camper, which will be, in this position, it'll be vertical. Um, but when we get the canopy up, it'll actually be more of a horizontal position. But right now, I'm going to just bring it up vertically to attach it to the, uh, the camper on both sides. And then I'll be able to bring up the canopy and extend the feet down, which is um, maybe a, uh, a se sequence of steps which I would recommend uh, to make it easiest on you. So, um, so I'm going to just um, bring the bar, um, pivot it out basically, and it's going to just extend it up. I'm going to hook it into this uh, U channel up here, um, and uh, it's going to go through this. Uh, Eye, eye opening here, and I'm just going to use a simple, um, you know, pin. Uh, this is actually just a simple uh, penny nail, and I'm just going to hold it in place with that. What I've done is um, a modification on this bar. I've actually drilled holes in it uh, and installed a detent so it can click and hold it at certain levels. The manufacturer had it where you would twist it to hold it in place, which I wasn't very satisfied with. I didn't really enjoy that uh, feature. I didn't see, see that it worked that well. So I uh, drilled all these holes myself. And uh, what I've done is I've um, put a mark on the bar to let you know where the detent is so you can line it up with the holes. Because if you twist it, you don't know where the ball is, right? But if this line, if you line the line up with the, the actual holes, the detent will line up with the holes. So. So here's that line, and it, as you pull it up, hopefully, we'll see if I'm moving from a wire. As you pull this out, um, I've made a couple marks to help you know if you're in the right place or not. One of the marks is a vertical, a vertical mark, which you can see here. And the other mark is a horizontal mark, which tells me that uh, you should be at this peg here, which should be just about the right distance uh, to hook up into here. Simply, what you do is you uh, you just line that uh, uh, eye hole up with the, the U channel, and you put in your pin, and then it'll hold it nicely in place. And that's that. We'll do the same thing on the other side. going to extend the support rods that are going to hold the awning up vertically. They get uh, unfolded, then extended. And then I'll just bring the whole tarp up. The, uh, the poles also have uh, drilled holes, and the pole that will extend out has a, uh, a tab that will uh, stick into the holes. There are uh, marks on the poles to help you keep it all uh, lined up. The black mark will show you uh, where the tab is, and that will help you line up with the holes. So I'm going to extend those poles and then bring up the tarp.
I've got both poles, support poles extended. I'm just bring the whole tarp up now. There's our awning. So to uh, get a little air flow in the uh, camper, there's a uh, roof uh, vent. You just uh, twist this and uh, you'll see the vent uh, open up. Uh, please make sure you close this um, as you pack the whole camper up. You definitely do not want to travel with this vent open. Uh, that would be uh, very bad news. You'll probably have this thing fly right off and break off the camper if you uh, try to drive with it open. But uh, certainly you'll, uh, you'll want it open to give you a little fresh air uh, while you're camping. Um, if it's raining, you might want to bring that down a Maybe sometimes all the way closed, but maybe even just an inch open. Uh, rain probably won't get in. And uh, as far as privacy and ventilation goes as well, um, uh, all these have drapes around all the windows. Um, behind the drapes are um, windows that can be unzipped. everything up and get some nice airflow through here as well. Um, I do recommend having everything zipped up when you pack everything closed. Uh, it's probably not a good idea to have all this uh, vinyl um, kind of kinked and um, folded and bent uh, as you pack everything up. It's a good idea to uh, return it all back to the zipped up position and close the curtains. Um, so that the whole thing can fold up um, most nicely without, with the least amount of damage to, to all the components. So now we've got uh, two areas on either side uh, that serve both as beds, but also they serve as uh, sitting areas. So this area folds up uh, just like so. This just comes up like this. seating area here. This area over here uh, is a little bit more complex. It also uh, serves as seating and also a dining area. And it's also got your stove underneath here. So first we um, just move these cushions to the side then we take out the table. We can actually use the table in here. Usually I don't. It's a little bit crowded especially trying to get into the bed. So I usually just use it outside in the dining area or the cooking area uh, where we're going to set up the, uh, the actual stove which is also underneath here. So We'll unfold this, we'll take the table out. I usually just set the table outside, then I'll show you how to get the um, uh, stove out, and then I'll show you where to attach it on the outside. So now that we've got the cushions apart, we can just take out, take out the table. Actually, take that table outside, and I've uh, got some other things. Got some uh, mats here. Uh, I recommend putting these right outside the uh, door step, uh, so that as you kind of uh, walk through all the dirt and uh, pine needles and everything, you can kind of wipe your feet on these, and it'll uh, cut down on uh, the amount of dirt and pine needles that come into the camper. Um, we've also got a, a broom in here and a dust uh, dust pan that you can also kind of sweep out the camper as things get dirty and accumulate, to which they inevitably will. Got an added little cooking screen here for you. You can use on the actual pit uh, campfire. So here's the, uh, here's the actual um, stove. And it's on, a, it's on a track to kind of keep it from moving around while you're in transport. But you just slide it out. can just pick it up and just take it right outside. I'll show you where we're going to install this outside where you can cook on it. So this is how you uh, get your cooking stove uh, hooked up. 
you're going to need this uh, support bar, which is going to go underneath in this slot, and also go in this slot. When I put the uh, stove on here, it'll support it. Uh, you'll find this in this uh, compartment right here. Uh, this is also where you find the jack and the pieces of wood and the level and lots of other little things, little bits and pieces that you're going to use uh, to set the, the tarp, uh, the camper up. Uh, that's in this little uh, storage thing directly to your right as you open the door. So I'll keep my support bar handy. Uh, what happens is you put this track, the same track that supported it inside for transport, we're going to use that same track to put it on this track on the outside, which is going to hold it in place against the side of the camper. <coughs> this is the, uh, the hose for propane hookup. So it's a propane stove. So simply all you do is you just uh, line it up. On the track, you're gonna have to kind of support it, kind of so it's nice and horizontal as you slide it in there, and you just get it lined up, kind of centered, because then these the two uh, these two uh, slots are gonna line up where I can now support it vertically. So that's it. It opens up like this, and then uh, the actual hookup for the gas is right here. Pull that out, and it's a uh, it's a kind of a ball catch. You just have to uh, get it in there and uh, get it caught. Um, so this you know sleeve pulls back. You can push it in, and the sleeve comes back. Uh, you can see it's not super smooth or easy to do. Uh, this in the uh, position like this has the gas blocked. To turn the gas on, you uh, will. Uh, move it to a parallel with the, the tube or with the hosing means now gas is flowing. Um, of course you do still have to need to turn the gas on here. For any gas to get to any of this you need to turn on at the um, main source which is at the front near the hitch and I'll show you where that is. So for any gas to get to the stove you first need to just turn on at the master, uh, master valve here at the top of the cylinder. You just Turn that, I uh, guess it'd be uh, counterclockwise if I was looking down at it like a bird. Just open it up, you know, until it, you know, it's nicely open. And uh, now gas will be back to that valve. You can use the, the stove uh, controls to actually turn the gas on now. All right, so what's all this stuff back here? Well, um, most of this I don't use because we don't use water in the sink in the camper. You can, but... Um, We've never done it, and I don't recommend it. Uh, obviously, if you're putting stuff down the drain and all that, you got to flush it all out. You got to clean it all up. So um, the one thing that you will definitely use over here is uh, is electricity. So the electricity is uh, something that you'll just pull pull this out, and you're going to walk this over to uh, wherever the uh, power is at the campsite. So that brings up the point of you kind of want to be strategic about how you place your camper because uh, you've only got so many feet of this uh, to get to the electrical box. So if you park your camper too far away from the electrical box, you can't get there unless you have an extension cord. Um, extension cord is a little bit tricky because uh, you see how thick this baby is. This is um, <clears throat> probably overkill because this is designed if you had an AC unit on here. We do not have an AC unit. So you can use a regular old uh, orange extension cord, but you do need a converter. As you see, this has a three prong, so you need a converter uh, before you can hook in your regular old extension cord in this to get some more feet to get to your electrical box. But um, if you want to be able to plug this directly into this is a 30 amp um, connector, so to hook into the 30 amp on the uh, box on the campsite, you need to probably be within 20, 20 or 25 feet of the of the hookup, so uh, just keep that in mind when you're placing your camper, and you just kind of feed it back in when you're done. When you're ready to pack up, you just uh, feed it right back in. And don't jam it all the way in. Keep that little end kind of in this little receptacle here. If you jam it all the way in, I gotta you know somehow get some kind of gripper device to go in there and try to retrieve it. So. Just keep that little uh, actual plug part just in this little receptacle area.
Well, there's our finished product. <clears throat> we got our camp bra assembled and unfolded and unzipped. And this is what it looks like on the outside. Got our uh, straps hooked up here on the underside. You can see those hooks on those uh, pegs there. Okay, and you can see the support rods here going into those holes. So those kind of receptacles there. They go up and they hook right into the boards that hold up the hold up the bed area and then we'll go inside and see what it looks like all all hooked up Here's this area here. This is where the stove stays when it's uh, being transported. Uh, same thing with the tabletop goes on there and all those cushions fold down over all that. But right now there's kind of a nice seating area. <clears throat> this is I'd be uh, considered to be the, the, the master bed. This is a queen sized uh, sleeping area. You can see you know we can unzip these as much as we want. Um, let in as much air as you want, you know, gets cool at night, you know, you probably want to zip these up a bit, keep some of the heat in. Um, you know, these curtains can be uh, both closed like this, and certainly they can be open like this, depending on whether it's at nighttime you want a little privacy, or daytime you want a little airflow. Here you can see what it looks like all zipped up. This end I have not unzipped at all, but this is all, all the way zipped up. And uh, you can see this whole side here. I've, I've uh, moved the curtains aside and I've unzipped these down and kind of just furled them down about halfway. You can, you know, you can make them go even much lower. Uh, here you can see the uh, kind of food prep area with the sink. Um, again, we don't really use the sink uh, actively uh, with water. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. It's going to be. Uh, creating all kinds of gook and uh, cleaning uh, hassles uh, that you're going to have to deal with, which we have not done. Uh, this is the one bed area that's um, folded down. You can fold that up, which uh, this area here would be the back back uh, of the uh, bench area. And this would be your seating area for the bench. So uh, this is down. This would be an additional sleeping area. This is the smaller um, of the pull-out sleeping areas. This would be maybe a, a twin size, uh, whereas the other side is the, uh, the queen. So I've got a queen here. Uh, both these also do, if you put the table down here, these could also fold down and this could be another additional sleeping area. So you know you could probably fit two here, one here, one here, and you know probably maybe two kids here or one adult. Uh, so ideally, you know, potentially you could maybe sleep six in this camper, um, four very comfortably, um, which is what we do as our family. We got two adults and two kids. Uh, two kids are back here, and uh, two adults are up here. So, uh, so there's our camper. Enjoy your camping adventures.